Hi, my name is Aaron Leotom, and I'm with Unreal Devs today to go ahead and talk about something that was asked on the Facebook, or asked on Facebook. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about something really cool. Now, let's say that you have an environment here, and you got like a building, and you got this dude up here, and this dude's holding a really highly detailed weapon up here. Alright? And he's got like an evil mustache and a little hat. <laughs> Alright, and let's see your dude down here. You have little legs, so you can't actually get up there, but this jerk is over here shooting at you. When you think to yourself, man, I wish I can get up there. If there's only was a way for me to get up there, I would really wreck that guy. You can't take the elevator because the elevator is taped off for construction. And you can't take the stairs because there's landmines on it for whatever reason. So you're thinking to yourself, man, there has to be some way to get up there. And then it dawns on you what you can do. You can put on a jetpack. Then you go up there, and you just mess that guy up. So we're going to go ahead and talk about jetpacks today. Jetpack version 1.337A. All right. Now, here we go here. I got, I got these dudes that I was playing with their transforms. That's why the legs are like Chun-Li. What we're going to do first is I'm going to show you kind of what it's going to look like. You go like that. You're going to press a button and it's going to shoot out a flame and we're going to go ahead and just go up. All right. Now, some people like to have um, horizontal movement with the jetpacks. I'm just going to show you how to do vertical. And it's really easy once you do this to go ahead and <clears throat> adapt it to your own scenario. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the character here. Now, I'm personally going to house the code inside of the character. You do not have to do this. You can do this any way you want. But this is just an approach that I'm going to do for the sake of easeability. And what we're going to do here is I'm not even going to create a button input. I'm just going to use the E. Possibly. Let's see how this goes here. No, fine. We're going to use G. There we go. Look at that. Now, I'm going to disconnect all this down here. This was me testing it out before the video, and I think we're going to be good. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a Boolean. And what you're going to do is you're going to set this Boolean to true when the button is pressed, and you're going to set it to false when it's not pressed, or when it's released, rather. <clears throat> so I already went ahead and did that, and I have two Booleans here. All right. And if you don't know what the different variable types are, you should really go through the Unreal um, are the epic videos for Unreal. Now, as I was saying, so when I press G, I want to set this boolean to true. And I want to set this to false. To go ahead and make sure that this is all working perfectly fine, we're going to go ahead and plug these two in. And if you plug that in right there, it'll, it'll actually return whether it's true or false. So we're going to hit play. And if you look, if I hold it down, it's true. The more I let go, it's false. All right. Pretty exciting stuff here. So now, what we want to go ahead and do <coughs> is I have, right here, I have a particle that I'm activating, but I'm not going to do that for this part of the tutorial. So I'm going to move that over here. What I do, though, is I go over here and I'm like, all right, well, we definitely want to set our fuel because we want to have some variable that we're pulling away from in order to have a quantifiable period of flight time. Now you don't have to do this and you can skip this this portion right here if you want to but if you do want to have a quantifiable amount <clears throat> then you want to go ahead and do this. So first we want to set it up. Okay well right now we're setting it to zero which does us no good. Well we need two variables here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get our fuel. So we're going to reference this again. And we're going to tell our, our fuel that hey when I have this button pressed, I'm going to go ahead and I want to take my fuel and I want to subtract an amount, an amount, 
Now, we could subtract 0 and again, would do nothing. Or you can put a number in here. And that's fine as well. Now, I personally created a variable so that I could adjust it more easily than, instead of having to find it somewhere in the graph. So I actually have an amount lost. And I plug that in there. And my amount lost is set to 5. My fuel is set to 1,000. So we're going to plug that in. So that means that every time this happens, it's going to take this fuel and subtract 5. And then it's going to set that value. All right, that's kind of cool. Now, we want another branch here, at the end here. And this branch is basically going to allow us to make sure that we're not going into the negatives with our fuel count. Otherwise, having a quantifiable amount does no good. So you can either pull out <coughs> the fuel here, and, if, and uh, we can do our math with this. Or, if you're in 4.7, you can go ahead and pull from there, and it'll actually give you the same variable. Um, just in case somebody who's watching is not using 4.7, I'm going to go ahead and just do it this way. So we want to make sure that our fuel is greater than 0. And if it is, we're going to return true. Awesome. Now, here's where it starts to get a little exciting. First we're going to do is get our character movement and we're going to add force. And we're going to plug true into this. Now right now we're going to add zero force to all three axes. What I'm going to do is right click this, so right click on the yellow dot and say split struct pin. And I'm going to take my force Z and I'm going to promote it to a variable. Now I already have that variable so I'm going to plug that in. And my jetpack Z force is set to I believe 300,000. Yep, 300,000. And you're going to have to adjust this based on the mass of your character and the gravity your character is influenced by. But for the um, third person template, this is a, a good number to use. Alright, so that's good. Now we want to add a delay <coughs> because we're going to want this whole thing to loop. I'm going to put the duration of 0 0.01. And then we're going to put a branch here. And in this branch, we want to make sure that the button is pressed down still. So if you see here, we do have that set to true. So we're going to go ahead and take jetpack button pr press down, which is, as you remember, the, uh, the boolean we're actually setting here. All right. And then we're going to take this if it is pressed down. So if I am pressing down G, <clears throat> I want to go ahead and go all the way back to setting my fuel right here to the amount lost. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and minimize this. Now before I even test this out, <coughs> I'm going to save it. And then I created it. In, I created a folder for this tutorial and I'm going here and I'm going to say user interface widget blueprint. And I went ahead and created it and I named it jetpack UMG. So I'm going to double click this. Now I just have a text thing here that says fuel, we'll call it uh, gas doesn't matter what it, what it is. And then right here, we have a progress bar. So I'm going to pull another one down here to show you what's going on. I'm going to delete this one. And then, uh, let's see. Let's change this to green. No. There we go. All right, we're going to move this up here. And then what we want to do with this, this is just so that we can read how much fuel our tank has. Now, the first thing we want to do is now that you've created this, we want to compile this and then go back to the character. And make sure that you have a fuel max variable set. So we have a fuel one right here. We also want a fuel max. So <clears throat> make sure that they are the same um, value starting out. All right, so we go back to here and we're going to go click on this percent bar or the progress bar. And where's this percent? We're going to click bind and create binding. And then we're going to right click. And assuming that you're not using split screen or anything like that, you can just say get player controller. And it's going to return index 0, which is the first person playing. And we're going to say get pawn or get controlled pawn. So we're, the first controller that's being used, we're going to get the pawn that they're possessing. 
And then we're going to go ahead and say uh, cast to, and I believe this guy's third person character. Feed that in there. <coughs> so we want to get the max fuel. And then we want to get fuel by itself. Now, right now, these are both integers, which is going to make division kind of clunky. So what I like to do is go to two float. So we're we're uh, turning them into floats. Whoops, putting plurals in. All right. Now, what we need to do is actually I'm going to move this on top of this one because we need to get a percentage. So something that would equal out to 100 percent. So we're going to take this and we're going to divide it by our max. So <clears throat> if this is at one, but our max is at two, that'll return 50 percent. Plug that back in there, and plug that in, and we are good. So we can close that for now. Now, you can have your call wherever you want to create the widget, but I already have this set up in my level blueprint uh, for the sake of just being easy. I have that, and we press play. Okay, so if you remember, um, we went ahead and set up that gas. So if you look at the top right there, it's saying that I have 100% of my gas. All right, that's pretty cool. And the next thing, we want to verify that we have all the setup. So we have the button pressed down. We're setting the fuel to lose an amount. We're checking to see if that amount is greater than zero. We're adding a force to the character movement. That's this one right here. So make sure to grab that. And then <clears throat> we're going to add a delay to 0 0.01. And at the end of the delay, we want a branch to make sure the button is pressed down. And if it's true, to repeat this. Now. We're going to test it out right now. So when I press G, I go up. And I come back down slow because my gravity is pretty low. So G up. G up. All right. Cool. So what we want to do now, I went ahead and I created a particle. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. It's pretty simple. So let me go here. It's called Jetpack Stream. And we're going to view motion okay so what I did is I turned the spawn to zero and the rate scale you know that's that's at its default of one there's no burst under required I make sure that I don't have local space on velocity I have 10 10 negative 600 for both the Z and then uh, negative 10 10 so that gives a little bit of variance into what direction is going on the X and Y and then it's shooting straight down for the Z. And then what I do is I use a spawn per unit. Now what this enables it to do is whenever the, the particle emitter moves in 3D space, it's going to create a particle right then. It's going to spawn one. So I have a spawn per unit right here. I put the unit scalar to 1. And then under spawn per unit, I click this. And distribution, I put 1 as well. That means every 1 to 1 unit that, that is moved, it will spawn one particle. And then I have a size by life. At zero, I have 0.2 for x. And uh, for one, I have three. So what that means is as it starts out, it's going to start out small and it's going to get bigger. Like we can do something crazy and put this like 12. As you can see, it gets really big. All right, and this is just a placeholder asset just for this tutorial. So nothing too hot. All right. So we got that. And the whole reason I brought that up is because I went ahead and I added in my viewport the particle to my next gen uh, jetpack. So I added one there and I added one there. And by default, they are turned off. So auto activate is set to false. Now, what that means <clears throat> is that what we can do is we can get this one. So it doesn't matter which one you grab first, just grab one. And then type in activate by dragging off. So you want to take this and say activate. And then bam. It's activated and then you want to grab the other one say get or you don't have to get it and then just drag it and target and then there you go both of them are set up so when this button is pressed we're going to activate <coughs> now the problem with just leaving it like this is that it's going to always stay on once the button is pressed so we need to deactivate it as well so I'm gonna take this I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna go ahead and say deactivate and I'll plug that one in as well so both my particles plugged into activate and deactivate. So that's plugged in right there. 
All right. <coughs> so let's see how this works out. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that particle. All right. Cool. Now, you ask me, okay, well, your fuel is slowly depleting, but we have no way of refilling it. Well, I have good news for you. We have a way to go ahead and handle that. Go ahead and create a new blueprint. Actor. We'll call it Jetpack Gas. We're going to open it up here. Now, so I can tell that it's gas, we have to have an identifiable shape. I'm going to go with the capsule here. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to put a text <coughs> render over it. So we're going to move this over here. And we're going to center it to both horizontal and vertical alignment. And we're going to call it legit gas with an exclamation point to make it serious. All right, so that portion's cool. So we compile it. <coughs> now here's what we want to do. First of all, we want to grab the shape that we have. And we want to make sure that it's set to overlap all dynamic. Now I want to have two things with this um, pickup. I want either it to, I want to be able to assign the amount of fuel it gives. And I also want to make sure that I can enable the um, object being deleted or being kept. So I need a, <coughs> excuse me, a Boolean or an integer, or and an integer rather. So the boolean is destroyed after pickup, and we want to make sure to expose that so we can edit edit that in the editor, and then we want to say uh, fuel amount, and we're going to change this to an integer, and also expose that. So we're going to compile, and fuel amount I'm going to set by default to 100. Um, you can modify that all you want. Okay. Now what we want to do is on event actor begin overlap. We want to cast to our character. And if the cast is, success is successful, we want to go ahead and get max fuel. And then we also want to get fuel. All right, now what we want to do is we want to set fuel. And we're going to move this portion down. We're actually duplicate that and plug that back in. Okay. So before we do any math, we want a branch. So from our third-person character, we we'll go ahead and uh, hit this and go to branch. If I can type correctly, that'd be cool. All right. And if it's true and if it's false, we'll plug this both into the <coughs> respective uh, nodes. And then we're going to get if this is destroyed, do one of these things. And actually. I'm getting ahead of myself because that branch comes after these. So I'll plug that in and I'll come back to that. What this is, is it asks, is this greater than or equal to fuel max? <coughs> if this is, oh, getting ahead of myself again, fuel amount plus fuel. So let me, let me clear these up real quick and re-explain myself. We want to know if the amount that we're giving ourselves, so if this fuel here plus 100, which is the default value that I have here, if that is greater than or equal to the fuel max, we're going to go ahead and say, all right, then in that case, we want to set that to the fuel max. So that's saying that if I have 800, excuse me, if I have 999 fuel and then I add 100 onto that, which would take me above my fuel max, I want to go ahead and set my fuel to the max, so I'm capping it out. However, if that is not the case, I want to go ahead and set it to the amount of the fuel plus the fuel amount. Alright, so I mean that gets a little crazy looking, but I mean that's pretty much that I'll handle that instance of it. Now, we get to the part that I was trying to jump to earlier. We want to know if the object that I'm messing with right now, if it is overlapped and it does all of its other logic, do I destroy this object? If it is true, I want to destroy actor. Bam. All right, so go ahead. I'm gonna delete this old one that I was using earlier, and put the jetpack gas down. We're gonna set it to uh, 200, and then we're gonna set this one over here to 200 as well, and we'll destroy that one. I'm gonna save it again. I'm just gonna wait for a moment here. 
All right, I'm gonna hit play. <clears throat> I'm actually gonna use my fuel if I can remember which button that was. And that's probably good. All right, and if you look at the top left, my fuel is almost half. So if I go over this, it add it added an amount. I go over it again, bam, added an amount. Cool. So it's adding that 200 each time. And if I go over this one, it'll add the 200, but it doesn't take me over it, and it also destroys the object, so I can get rid of it that way. Well, now you're asking me, well, Aaron, what if I don't want to have a pickup? What if I just want the jetpack to regenerate on its own? Well, we're going to go ahead and cover that as well. So, I'm going to move that out of the way. And the logic we're going to do is actually pretty similar to uh, what we've already done here. So, in fact, it's so similar that I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this portion of here. So when the button is not pressed, we're going to set that boolean to false. We're going to deactivate our particles, and then we're going to go into this loop. So right here we're going to say, I want to set my fuel to the fuel plus, and again, you can put a variable in there, or a, uh, a uh, scalar parent. Wow, English. You can put a scalar in there and just put a number, or you can promote it to a variable. I went ahead and created a variable for it, has a, and it's called amount gained. Okay, so my amount gain is set to 2. That means that I'm going to gain 2 every time this ticks. So I'm going to plug this into my set. And then what I want to do is actually say my fuel here, is it less than or equal to my fuel max? If it is, I want to go ahead and plug that in. And what that means is it's going to check and make sure that I'm under my fuel cap every time I do this. And I'm like, okay, that's true. Well, we don't want to add force anymore because uh, that would be just nuts. So we'll delete those. Maybe. Come on. All right. Now we're going to take it and plug it into my delay. So if I'm under my cap, I want to go ahead and go through a delay, a 0 0.01, and I want to check to see if my jetpack button is down. Now, in this instance up here, we wanted to make sure the button was being pressed while we we're flying to take it away. Well, now we want to check and make sure the button is not being pressed. So we're going to go ahead and take this false and go and plug it all the way back over here and compile. And I'm going to save. I'm play. And then when I let go, Oh man, it is like magic. All right. And that pretty much covers the Jetpack tutorial. Um, if you guys have further questions, make sure to ask on the Facebook group what those questions are. All right, you guys have a good rest of the day or night or wherever the hell it is for you guys. Bye.